everyone, this is Dr. Susan Brown at the Center for Better Bones. Really happy to be with you again today. We're going to have this opportunity to talk about a bone that we rarely don't think about or we don't hear much mention about. This is a bone, the only bone that you can easily see within the human body. Well, you might have guessed already that's the jawbone. The jawbone is the most visible bone and the health of the jawbone and the health of the oral cavity can tell us a lot about the health of the body. When I first wrote um, my book, Better Bones, Better Body, 20 years ago, I pointed out the fact that receding gums were a sign of bone loss and receding gums in particular predicted the bone loss in the spine. Now you might say, why is that? It's because the jawbone and the spine have very similar type of bone, this kind of spongy trabecular bone. If you've ever broken into a chicken bone, you notice there's a hard outside layer that's more cortical, tough bone. And there's inside bone marrow and a spongy bone. That spongy bone has lots of surface area and it's the first bone to sacrifice itself when the body needs more calcium, magnesium, alkalizing compounds. It's very metabolically active. It turns over a lot. And so that's also why we learn we break our spines or have spinal fractures much, much, much younger in life than we have hip fractures because of the different types of bone. So the bone in the jaw is very similar to the bone in the spine. And when you're losing jaw bone, you're losing spine. I became so interested in this when I'm in my 30s, the dentist told me, you have receding gums, you should go see a periodontist. I said, wow, I was smart enough then to know that there was a link between this bone and the rest of my body. And actually the average woman around 30, 35 begins to have receding gums in this country. So it's not unusual, but it's something that you can monitor. And you can actually monitor yourself when you look at the teeth and you might see some of the root showing that is a sign of receding gums. Remember the old story with horses, they look in the mouth and age by the teeth. So, uh, so that is, you can check it out yourself and you should certainly, when you go to the dentist, say, hey, hey, uh, doc, how are my gums coming along? Are they nice and healthy? Are they receding? If they're receding, have him help you monitor. Our Better Bones program is excellent to stop receding gums just like it's excellent to work with the bone mass and the rest of the body. So you can have your dentist monitor that, you can monitor yourself. Remember that there's a link between receding gums and spinal bone density. Now, scientists have gone further. Most recently, studies in several countries, in Taiwan, in the US, and other parts of the world, have shown that periodontal disease is also very linked to osteoporosis. Let's just take a minute and talk about periodontal disease. Now periodontal disease has a twofold process. One, you have receding of the gums so that the gums separates from the tooth and there's room for bacteria to get in there. And if you've gone to a doctor, a periodontist in particular, or even your dentist, will take a little probe and measure how big is that gap? How big is the gap between the tooth and the gum? And then in that gap can set infection. So periodontal disease has two issues, not only receding gums, but it has infections. So you have to work with the bone with all the 20 key bone nutrients and alkalizing. And, and I'll even show you an exercise for the teeth that the Chinese do. But you also must work with the immune system. You must boost your immunity. We particularly like things like buffer ascorbate, all these high antioxidants, CoQ10. And interesting, you must keep a nice, clean oral cavity. It's kind of amazing that one single tooth, if you brush a lot and have good hygiene and you have good bacteria in your mouth, it can have like 1,000 to a million bacteria. But a mouth that's not so clean, this is bacteria per every single tooth surface. If your mouth is not so clean, you can have up to a billion bacteria for every single tooth surface. So we have not only a zoo of bacteria in our intestine, but we have a zoo of bacteria in our mouth. That bacteria can produce acid. If you ever went to bed, if you ever had a sweet at night and wake up in the morning, your mouth feels a little dirty, that's because that acid condition, the bacteria is starting to erode bone. 
so the periodontal disease has those two factors. And before I give you some tips of what to do about periodontal disease and, and gum disease and receding gums, let me tell you that the research shows that about 40% of adults in Taiwan and the U.S. have periodontal disease and they don't recognize it. And if you have periodontal disease, if you take the, in Taiwan, they looked at thousands of cases of people, 30,000 cases where people were identified with periodontal disease. They watched them for six years. And those people who had periodontal disease were at twice the risk of developing osteoporosis as they age. So if your dentist says, hey, you've got some dental situation here, some periodontal disease, you've greatly increased your likelihood to osteoporosis. All the more important, you develop a strong Better Bones, Better Body program, do every step of the program. And equally, if other researchers have looked at people who had osteoporosis and found that they were much more prone to have dental disease. So it just goes back to saying the body's one single unit the mouth is very important. Your dentist can be your great ally, and you can also see what's happening. Now, some of the tips, of course, are to brush very carefully, to be sure that you have a clean mouth. And one of the fascinating ways to clean the mouth and to promote the beneficial bacteria is with xylitol. In fact, you might have, uh, you might have seen that xylitol is a sweetener that does not affect blood sugar. This happens to be a chewing gum I use with xylitol. Xylitol is an interesting sweetener because it, it helps bone and it changes the oral cavity. It actually alkalizes. So you, if you have a child or you yourself like to chew gum, it's a very good idea to take xylitol chewing gum. In fact, many dentists, dentists suggest take xylitol chewing gum right after you, if you can't, particularly if you can't brush your teeth, to get all the remnants of food and to alkalize the oral cavity. In fact, I met a dentist recently who's developed her own brand of chewing gum, and it's a very effective thing. Interesting also that chewing is a very effective way to deal with stress. The Japanese actually have scientific articles on chewing as a way to reduce stress and cortisol response. So there's lots of good reasons to find yourself a good chewing gum with xylitol. I am going to write recently, currently, very soon in one of the blogs, I'm going to write about how much xylitol you actually need to build bone because it is a bone building factor and it will definitely alkalize the oral cavity. Having a lot of saliva is really helpful. The ancient systems like in India, China would have you generate saliva and swish saliva around. That's how we keep our mouth alkaline actually, by having lots of saliva. And of course, if our pH is saliva, if our pH is alkaline, the saliva is going to be much more alkaline. Flossing is a great idea. Water picks, all those are a great idea. And to exercising the jawbone, you know what the ancient Chinese did? They said to click your teeth. Just like we might lift a heavy weight, we click our teeth. That actually, they say, helps to build the strength of the roots. The same principles apply to the jawbone that apply to the whole body. Nourish them well, keep them clean, exercise them. One way of exercising and a nice thing to keep them clean is with xylitol chewing gum. I guess I'm biased. I happen to like chewing gum. That's a great way I deal with stress. But this particular kind of chewing gum seems to be good for you. So we have a couple minutes to ask questions, to answer questions. Um, so feel free to type your question in. There's one question I get all the time when we start talking about jawbone health and, and spinal bone density or bone density. And people will say, well, you know, my doctor told me that I have receding gums because I brush too hard. And really, that's not the case. You know, I mean, it could be possible. If that were the case, you would be bleeding just from the brushing itself. That wear and tear does not come from brushing. It comes from the inside, a loss of bone. Now, if your gums bleed, that's another different situation that's very important. It means that the capillaries are weak. It needs, we need to strengthen them. One of the major strengthening factors is vitamin C, and we happen to use a buffered vitamin C that's really helpful. Another alkalizing factor, uh, other minerals will also help, antioxidants and things, but vitamin C and quercetin is the main way we deal with those bleeding gums. And when you're 
when you start doing a healthful program like the Better Bones program, you're going to accept that you're going to expect any bleeding gum to correct. That's really for sure. And you also want to make sure that your receding gums quiet down, any periodontal disease disappears. There's many sophisticated treatments for periodontal disease. And if you have advanced disease, it's very important to get good attention because you've probably heard bacteria in the mouth. Remember, you can have 1 million bacteria for every tooth surface. That, if it's pathogenic, if it's not nice alkalizing bacteria, it can affect the heart. And that can, the, it can actually develop heart disease as a way of introducing infection into the heart from the teeth and from the oral cavity. And of course, with dentistry, it would be very important to remember that dentistry is changing. It's re we're having a revolution in dentistry, but these silver fillings, mercury fillings, are not only acid forming, but they're toxic to the body. So take care with that for sure to avoid those. Let's see, here's the questions. Um, how about oil pulling for the teeth? I have read that swishing sesame or coconut oil can help with our overall dental health. You know, that's really excellent. And this is an ancient system from Ayurveda, the ancient 5,000-year-old science of medicine from India. And what sesame oil has very special antioxidant properties. You warm up a little sesame oil. Today, people are liking to do coconut oil. That's probably also fine. You maybe take a tablespoon. I, I take a tablespoon. Some people take a little bit less. And you swish it around the mouth. You can actually try to draw it between the teeth if you have space. The interesting thing is this is done maybe 15 minutes. If you People mm, perhaps do it when they're showering or when, they, when they're when they getting ready to. I, I tend to do it when I'm. I also do a sesame oil massage on my whole body because it's very nice and in the morning before I shower. And so I do the oil pulling then. Oil pulling. Oil pulling helps to regulate the bacteria in the mouth and to get beneficial bacteria to take over. It's a very good idea and a very ancient system. Always spit out the oil, don't swallow it. I tend to wash my mouth out with some warm water afterwards because you're discharging any of that unwholesome bacteria that's collected overnight. Oil pulling is a great idea. Uh, as another question, I've been diagnosed with osteopenia. I have increased my vitamin D and what else should I be taking? Okay, we're just spending a lot of time looking at osteopenia, and there's many ins and outs to it, but osteopenia really just means that you're probably not building enough bone, that that balance between bone buildup and bone breakdown, there isn't enough buildup going on, so you want to stimulate the bone building. So vitamin D is important. We always strive for a 50 to 60 NG level of vitamin D. And you can find lots of information about vitamin D on my website, betterbones.com. Vitamin D is really important, but don't forget there's at least 20, 20, 20 other key bone building nutrients. Things like manganese, zinc, copper, boron, magnesium, selenium, many, many nutrients. So I would suggest if you're really interested in osteopenia, you go back and look at uh, all the steps to the Better Bones program, doing an alkaline diet, getting all the nutrients, doing the proper stress reduction, exercise, all those things are very important. And of course, appropriate vitamin D. I did see one study with young people with osteopenia. All they did was correct the vitamin D, give a few nutrients, and these people moved out of osteopenia. But stay tuned. We're going to have lots of information on my website about osteopenia. Osteopenia is different if you're a thin person or if you're a heavy person. There's a lot of details to this. But go back to the Better Bones program. Do it all. And you'll have better bones and a better body for your whole life. Let's see. we got another question here. How does being on Prolia affect your dental care? Just join. Sorry, this has been asked. Prolia is one of those drugs that is very effective at halting bone breakdown. It's one of the new drugs. It works a little differently than the bifosphonates like Fosamax, and it's probably more powerful. So what that drug does is it halts bone breakdown. So you'd say, oh, that's good. I'm not breaking down so much bone. But the problem is that that drug also halts bone buildup because bone buildup and bone breakdown are tightly coupled. If you lower bone breakdown, you're going to lower bone buildup. And that's where the problem using these drugs for a long period of time can come in. 
because if you do not break down old pieces of bone and if you do not build up new pieces of bone you're going to have bone that isn't well repaired that may look strong but doesn't repair well if you think about it right now in your body there's well over one million sites where bone breakdown cells are eating up old pieces of bone that is weakened <clears throat> and bone other bone buildup cells are coming back and laying down new bone if you halt that process then you run the risk that the bone may be maybe not fresh and new and able to heal itself and this is why the concern with using those drugs for over five years is so great and this is why the dentist will say hmm I really wish you wouldn't use that because I have to pull out a tooth and I'm afraid that tooth won't heal because there isn't enough activity of renewing bone so as far as how it might be affecting in your situation you know check with the dentist uh, these drugs have quite a long lasting effect on the body and your dentist can help you see whether he thinks you're at risk certainly they generally take precautions around dental material dental issues of pulling teeth for example because we're talking about the healing the healing after there's been some disruption to the jawbone good question though perfect well it's been a lot of fun talking with with you all today let's see if we have any other question um, oh yeah there is a question here can too much vitamin D result in deficiency of other vitamins and minerals well you know that's an interesting way to put the question vitamin D excess is very rare and vitamin D deficiency is probably applies to half of the population all over the world so it's not very common and the neat thing about vitamin D is you can have it tested you know we're looking for a 50 to 60 level if you get over a hundred you know that's too high can can high vitamin D actually affect, affect other vitamins and minerals well you know one of the real problems with very high vitamin D is that you might absorb too much calcium and so because vitamin D greatly controls how much calcium you absorb so if you absorb too much calcium then the body's got to deal with that it's got to excrete it in the urine you might run into kidney stones it's got various issues so yeah I mean you could excess vitamin D can cause you to get too much calcium and maybe disrupt the phosphorus because phosphorus absorption is also regulated by vitamin D but in the uh, but in the other sense of manganese zinc copper I don't see much going on but remember you should never have to even worry about vitamin D excess because you just get tested you just get tested our government says 4,000 is safe for everyone I just talked uh, half an hour ago to a woman in England who was on 4,000 all winter and that was too much it was too much so it's rare I personally take like 6,000 in the winter to get that 50 level but just get yourself tested because there are strange things some people have more active vitamin D receptors or whatever and they do they do fine on lower levels that's the one nutrient we can test and we can test easily and I suggest everyone do it great well I appreciate you all being with me we're having fun with these uh, Facebook lives um, stay tuned to our website be sure you have your friends also subscribe to our blog betterbones.com every week I give all sorts of information little tips on how to maintain bone health and how to have general overall health maximized in your life in the meantime till next week I wish you well and I hope you have a great week. Bye-bye.